Have I told you lately that I love you? Could I tell you once again somehow? Have I told you how with all my heart and soul I need you? Audrey, well, darling, have I told you lately that I love you? I'm because I do. And a woman as precious as you, as gentle as you, should be cherished and nurtured. Treated like a hothouse flower. Protected and preserved in the delicate warmth of her own humidity. Huh? Humidity. Oh, I'll turn on the fan. Because when you love a woman, I mean, when you really love a woman, that's what you do. Because that's what you should do. So will you? Will I what? Will you marry me? <laughs> I... Till death do us part. Ian, I... Audrey. Signal. No, no, I need more time. Azimuth, 220. Andromeda. They're here? Who's here? Get the hell out of here. I have to go. I can't explain. No, wait. What do you mean? I'm sorry. I... No, no, take me. I'm the dominant species. Ian! Ah! ah. I have your word? Yes. And you promised. I said I promised. Very good. Let's say you had helped someone, and then you swore you would never help that person again. This is a hypothetical question, right? All right, Ray, sure. Okay. Okay, well, let's say this hypothetical person had not been entirely honest with you. Well, as a matter of fact, he... All right, he was a pathological liar, but he had helped you, and in so doing, he had not helped you, so to speak. You want to tell me which one of your friends we're talking about here? Well, no, I thought we agreed this was a hypothetical situation. Ah, oh, that bad, huh? Uh, unfortunately. Now, do you think you could find it in your heart to help him again? Well, what specifically did this friend of yours do? Ours. That... Ours. Yes. Okay, what specifically did this hypothetical friend of ours do that was so bad that I would never help him again? Well, let's just say that he ruined your vacation. And he caused you to be attacked by Canadian mobsters, which in turn forced you to shoot and explode your car until it was a seething fireball. Hi Hypothetically. No. 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 There's no room. No. Amazing friend you've got, Fraser. I mean, how many guys would run a marathon around the world to raise money for an orphanage in China? 250,000 miles, his feet bleeding, heart fit to burst just to buy some poor little Chinese kids a big screen TV. And a Dumbo video. You gotta love a guy who loves Dumbo. Ian. Ian McDonald. Don't tell me this man is here, because if he is, I'm gonna take my gun out and I'm gonna shoot myself. Hi, guys. Am I glad to see you? On second thought, I'm gonna shoot him. Ray, Ray, please. You promised. That was hypothetically. He needs help. No. Ray, it will take 10 seconds, and a person's life may depend upon it. Look, Ray, just because someone feels compelled to lie, it doesn't mean that there isn't a grain of truth in there somewhere, and I'm... Fairly certain that he did intend to go to China. Two seconds. All right, thank you. Ian, tell him. My fiance has been abducted by aliens. I don't. Telling the truth. Truth? You don't even know how to spell the word. T-R-U-T-H. 
Do I need to remind you what happened the last time we went for a ride with this clown? We were in a barroom shootout, there was mud up to here, and we were in a massive car chase. And then he stole my car. He borrowed it. And he did return it. Yes, just in enough time for me to blow it up to save his sorry butt. Now, you should have let me strangle him. It wouldn't have worked. The aliens put a protective force field around me. Ray, wait. We should at least hear him out. Why? What good it'll do? He'll only tell us a bunch of lies, and you'll believe him, and the next thing you know, we're going to be driving around in circles, dodging bullets. See, now that would never would have happened if you let me drive. Oh, shut up! You know, Ray, every piece of the puzzle that doesn't fit, it just gets us closer to finding that piece of the puzzle which does. Well, thank you, Grasshopper, but I have other business to attend to. You. You're late. The suspect's heartbeat is probably way too high by now. This thing is useless. Go get me a bucket of ice, a wet towel, and three jars of tomato juice. I'm gonna make this guy talk if it's the last thing I do. Go, man, go! There's no time to lose. Where's my suspect? He confessed. I sent his file to the state's attorney and put him in holding. You impersonated a cop. <laughs> you certainly weren't doing a very good job. Oh, all right, that's it. Frazier, this guy's got some serious problems. He's probably skipped bail and is here illegally. I'm going to arrest him. Right. Come on. All right. At the very least, at the very least, we put him on a bus back to Winnipeg, notify immigration, and we do everybody a favor. He's talking aliens, for God's sake. Well, I agree he exaggerates, but there may be some truth to what he's saying. Let's take the cut on his forehead, for example. Oh, he slipped in the bathroom. Uh, I'm not so sure. The presence of minute paint particles, along with the traces of wood, and the cut and the abrasions. Wood. A cheap particle board would be my guess. And judging from the angle, he made contact with a low-lying piece of furniture, perhaps a dresser. All right, so he tripped in the bedroom. Well, now that is possible. But that would be an assumption, which is not altogether different from his exaggerations, if you follow what I'm saying. And if we don't investigate, we will never be certain. Of course we will. Never judge a book by its cover, Ray. Never judge a book by its cover? Nobody says that anymore, Fraser. My grandmother did. Oh, I knew she was behind this. Behind what? Oh, never mind. Never mind what? That your grandmother's behind this. You make no sense, Ray. I'm ready. I'm ready. <sighs> this guy's a moron. You won't regret this, Ray. I already am. Okay, I'm gonna give you my lunch hour. You got 60 minutes of my time to waste, and that's it. Now let's go. You haven't interrogated me yet. Don't push your luck. Just unhook yourself from that machine and let's go. Uh, Ray, we're all set up here, shall we? <clears throat> All right. Please state your name. My name is Ian McDonald. And what do you do for a living, Ian? I operate a tourism business out of Ontario. We take Canadians into the United States and sightseeing tours, which is actually where I met Audrey. The minute I saw her, it was magic. Like summer lightning. I knew, I knew the minute that I saw her that this was the woman that I would spend the rest of my life. Yes, I'm sure she was, uh, but... Before Detective Vecchio changes his mind, I... You should have seen her face when I gave her the ring. It was my mother's. The minute I slipped it on her finger, her eyes, they lit up like a kid at Christmas. I want to get to the point, please. She has blue eyes, just like my mother. And out of the blue, she was abducted. Yes. There was a bright light. I couldn't see a thing. We were on our way to the wedding. We'd stopped off for coffee. Audrey's father, the Doge of Venice, had flown in from Switzerland for the ceremony. The guests are strictly A-list. Strictly. Clint, Stallone, Sinatra, Bogart, Look, this everybody. is useless, all right? This guy couldn't tell the truth of his life depended on it. Bogart's been dead for 20 years. Frank Bogart, his younger brother. Big oil man in the Antilles. All right, look, just give me a blunt object. I'm going to put him out of his misery. Oh, yeah? Try it. My father-in-law gave me diplomatic immunity. This is very interesting, Ray. <sighs> what? Well, it would appear that there was a girl. <laughs> See? Shut up. And although she may not have been abducted by aliens, according to this, she was abducted. Of course, I suppose we could choose to ignore it. No. Let's call the FBI. I can't wait to see the expression on Agent Ford's face when he gets a load of this wacko. Yes, you're right. He won't take the wacko seriously either. Although, <clears throat> you might find this interesting. Oh, it's a bee sting. They were after Bogart. Killer bees. Hundreds of them. Oh, thousands, I'm sure. I think the stinger's still in there. It appears to be infected. Great Scott. Turtles. Turtles. Ow! Police brutality! I have removed it. I see. I expected better of you, sir. Sit down. I'm calling the Hague. Shall we? As a political prisoner, I demand that you people guarantee my safety under the Geneva Convention. So what was with the turtles? Well, there were no turtles, right? Well, I know there were no turtles. What were you doing? Oh, I was simply trying to distract him so that I could remove this. A needle. 
So what is he on, drugs? I didn't see any signs consistent with prolonged drug usage, a.k.a. track marks. And Ian hardly seems the kind of fellow who needs help to escape from reality, mm -hmm. but perhaps we should ask him. So he can tell us that it's an immunization shot for his honeymoon with the doge? I don't think so. Well, in that case, Ray, we will have to ask whoever it is that put this there. <sighs> oh, look, you only got 60 minutes. Why only 60? Because that's my lunch hour. Understood. Okay, and under no circumstances is that little liar going to set foot in my car. All right, we'll take my car. You have a car? Yes, I have a car. Well, what do you think? It's on loan from NASA. They were having financial difficulty with their space shuttle program and they were having a fire sale. Well, it's very roomy. Do you mind? There's a draft. It's very bad for the lumbago. No, not at all. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Certainly. <sighs> These your A-list clients? Hey. Just because a person is old doesn't mean they can't have an open mind and a desire to explore the unknown. Besides, the compound interest, a person's net worth by age 65 is a remarkable thing. Ray Power! Do well to remember that. Who needs Myrtle Beach when you have the opportunity of a lifetime? But we took one look at this brochure and said to ourselves, if we walk to the market instead of taking a taxi, eat a little less on Friday, buy wholesale, we can have this. <laughs> Why is it home watching Donahue and, and hear about someone else's sightings when you have a chance to get off the couch and see it for yourself? <laughs> yeah. May I? No, certainly. Thank you. A close encounter. It's guaranteed in the brochure. There are all kinds of close encounters. So it would appear. Sea Base 24, home of Hangar 57, the U.S. government's top secret UFO intelligence operation. Tour the base, meet the aliens, take a ride on a real flying saucer. You're actually charging money for this? With a money back guarantee? It's a line of bull. The best part is the Skywatch. Hundreds of spaceships from every galaxy gather around in an interplanetary display of precision flying. <laughs> Norman flew during the war. Now, dear. And our son's a pilot. Ah, oh, it's been a long time since I've seen him. Well, he's probably busy. And miss him. What a nice doggy. Well, he's a wolf, actually. And he's on a diet. That's enough. Oh. Nice piece of fried chicken, Mr. Glassman. It gives me heartburn. I told you, you should have made boiled. The <laughs> rump roast, honey. Allergic. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look to the left, you'll notice we're passing through Jackson. In 1983, I myself personally witnessed a spaceship suck the milk out of an entire herd of cows. Moo. Okay, gang, we meet in the mission room for a briefing at 1,500 hours. That's uh, 3 o'clock for those of you not yet on space time. He's such a nice boy. I love his dog. Space time, fellow travelers. Yeah, UFOlogists. Hundreds, thousands. They all come here. This is like the Woodstock of psychic fairs. This place is famous, the Constellation. This is where mixed days when the Stones are traveling and where Muhammad Ali and George Foreman had their secret meeting before the fight. But you, know, you didn't hear that from me, okay? And this, of course, is where I met Audrey. This is where you and Audrey had coffee. Hey, my fiance you're talking about, pal. Oh, forgive me. God, it was terrible. When the aliens ripped her out of my arms, I fought like a wild man, but what are you going to say to a spaceman when he's got a laser nerve disruptor pointed at your head? Beam me up? Hey, listen, pal. I've had about enough of you, all right? Why don't you just keep your sarcasm to yourself and your mind and your job? I'm talking about the woman I love here. Okay. All right, now look, it's a real disaster area in there, so just keep your cool. I wanted to preserve the integrity of the crime scene. Come on. He's 
not alone. Continue surveillance. Don't let them out of your sight. Right here. I'm telling you, there was blood everywhere. The, the walls, the ceilings, rivers of it. Well, you know, Ian, ordinarily I am inclined to believe you, but even if this room had been scoured clean, there should be a crack in the finish, and the particle board would have soaked up traces of blood. This dresser has obviously been replaced. Excuse me. That could be evidence. Oh. Hopeless. Yeah, give me a taxi. Chicago? Chicago. I know it's 60 miles. I know it's a long trip. <laughs> yes, I have money. Tomorrow. Kicked in? Right off its hinges. You must have used the right anti-gravity boots. Yeah, and they took the yellow pages, too. <laughs> the dresser has been replaced. The door jam's been repaired and painted. I'm not listening, because every time I listen, he says something stupid and you back him up. Damn, aliens took my stuff. A loud punk stereo closet full of Versace. Yeah, you would think that these higher life forms would have a more developed sense of ethics. Maybe they were bad aliens. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, could you perhaps tell me if you saw anyone going into room six within the last... Fifteen and a half hours. Fifteen and a half hours? Yep. Uh, could you possibly describe them to me? Yep. Do you think you could describe them to me now? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me guess. CIA, right? No. Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Constable Benton Fraser. Bob. Where's your horse? Well, I, I don't have one. I have a wolf, if, if that will help you any. You ride him? No, he's deaf. Two guys pulled up on a Ford Explorer around uh, 6 a.m., I guess. I was waiting for the primer to dry and went to get a cup of coffee. Couldn't have been gone, oh, 20 minutes. Came back, those fellows were gone, nothing missing. Why make a fuss? Finally, a reasonable explanation. Are you the owner? No. Are you the caretaker? No. What do you do? I build ships. When that baby's finished, she'll be an exact replica. An exact replica of the one in my basement. Ah. Oh. Thank you kindly. I am so glad we asked. What are you guys doing? That is a material witness. Put him in protective custody. Okay, two aliens and a Ford Bronco. Simple explanation. They're exerting mind control of the Ford Motor Company and using them to cover their tracks. How do I get out of this town? Left at the corner. Well, I don't have a car. <laughs> then you have a problem. <laughs> you have no idea. Is there a car rental agency? Apollo 13 Rentals. How about a bus? Last one went through an hour ago. Does the space shuttle fly over anytime soon? Ask Bob. I'd rather gouge my eyes out with a dull spoon. No, no, it's just an expression. Mind control over the Ford Motor Company. What's the matter with you? Well, you know, Ray, on the surface, it does appear to be slightly Look, Frazier, we are talking to a man who lies with a skill equal only to used car salesmen and presidents. Thank you. Ray, if you ignore the facts, you ignore the truth. Now, the fact is we have a witness who can corroborate that there was strange activity in Ian's room this morning. Yeah, and I bet you if we ask him who killed Kennedy and where Jimmy Hoppe is, he'd probably tell us little green men in his basement did it. Yeah, that was the mob. All right, now look, if you can get one truth to come out of his mouth, I'll stay, but that's the best I can do. Fair enough. All right. Now, what about food? Can you manage that? Try the bar. Thank you kindly. Okay, you guys got however long it takes for me to chop down a burger. You guys are going to love this place. It's four-star. They have the best pickled pork in the tri-state area. Mm. Friend of yours? Security. Uh, actually, Ian, I believe that the tri-state area consists of New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. Oh, but they come from there. Ian, and from everywhere else to eat here. Yeah. Your group is waiting. Oh. Okay, can you load them on the bus and just give them some of those maps to the aliens' homes? Thanks a lot. Isn't you great? Mm-hmm. Well, this is it. This is where Audrey and I had our engagement party. Quite the shindig, I'll tell you. Uh, is there anyone you recognize from last night? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, all I could see was Audrey. Well, there probably were other witnesses, Ian. 
Yeah, well, maybe we should ask the space lady here. She might know something. Excuse me, you got anything other than the Skywatch burger? You're not from around here, are you? Not unless there are aliens who look like second-generation immigrants. Hey, I recognize you. You were behind the bar last night. Yeah, and the night before that and the one before that. I haven't seen you here before. Uh, no, ma'am. I'm from the Northwest Territories. Now, is it possible that if my friend recognizes you from last night, that you might also recognize him from last night? Why don't you ask him? Oh, that's a long story. Yeah, sure, he was here last night. What? Well, the space lady was just saying. I heard, okay? Yeah, he sat right there, actually. You were here with, uh, Audrey McKenna, right? Yes, Audrey. Audrey McKenna. Yeah, you had a beer and she had two Cosmopolitans. <laughs> Audrey never has more than one. It's been a good night. Wait, you actually saw this man with the woman that he said he was with and she was actually being nice to him? He's a quick one. Well, ordinarily, yes. Uh, can you tell us where we could find this Audrey McKenna? She's not a townie. Doesn't talk much about herself or her work, which probably means she works on the base. She works at the base? Audrey works at the base? And this fact never came up. I've given you my lunch hour. I've come all the way out here to Nutsville, USA to check out your cockamamie story and canvas suspected aliens, only to have the space lady here tell me that Audrey McKenna may or may not work out a base of which you know nothing about? I knew everything I needed to know about her, okay? Like what? Like the important stuff. Like who she was inside. I didn't have to ask her a bunch of stupid questions. I took one look at her and I knew who she was. In here. I always have. God, that's beautiful. Thanks. How long did you know her? I don't know. I came in here last night at about 10 o'clock, and she came in at about 10.30. You met her last night? It only takes a moment. My mother used to say that. I thought it was Barbara Streisand. Oh, you know my mother? Hey, her next album is going to be a killer. All right, that's it. Come on, I'm going home. No, 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 please. I made a promise. Yeah, and she said yes, and then you gave her a ring, and her eyes lit up like it was Christmas, and you all lived happily ever no, after. I made a promise to my mother. She gave me that ring before she died. She told me to give it to the one woman that I truly love and care for. I told her that I'd give it to the woman that I would be faithful to for the rest of my life. Not like my father. Please, you gotta help me. I, I have to find her. We should go to the base. U.S. Army base. Yes. Frazier, the Army does not like civilians snooping around their backyard, okay? They tend to respond with heavy ordnance. No problem. We'll show them the pass I got from Desert Storm. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you direct us to the base? Yeah, I'll make a left uh, up the road. It's about five miles. Thank you. He made a promise, Ray, to his mother. They were the last words she heard. Okay, I'll give you an extension. Till when? Till I change my mind. Fair enough. Thank you, Carmen. Nineteen eighty-four, ten p.m. Tuesday, a little red blip appears in the radar screen at the Illinois Weather Tracking Station. At first, the radar technician thinks nothing of it. He thinks it's an aircraft. But when that little red blip breaks up into four other blips and flies off in separate directions, he knows something is amiss. Ladies and gentlemen, I now ask you to close your eyes and imagine yourselves back in that radar station. Why am I already regretting this? I can't imagine. We don't even know what she looks like. Engagement photos. These are from a dollar photo booth. Well, of course they are. After what happened with her brother and Princess Di, Audrey's family didn't want the pictures falling in the hands of the tabloids. By the time NORAD receives the mysterious signal, hundreds of fighter pilots have been deployed. 10.15, Sam Norbert's farm. Lights of red, green, and blue descend and encircle his barn. Hundreds of telephone calls swarm the Evanston Police Department. Our men in blue spring into action. Squad cars are scattered all over the city, responding to reported sightings. Sightings of unidentified flying objects. Ladies and gentlemen, to your immediate right, I present to you the sight of the first reported landing of an alien spaceship, right there beyond the trees. How does it feel to belong to the same gene pool? 
What do you mean, Ray? He's bilking them. Well, they seem happy enough. Hey, when does the real estate scam kick in? These people are from the Sunset Retirement Home. Okay, some of these people haven't been out of their bathrobes in seven years. Right, Murray? Eight. And China. Warning. No trespassing. Beyond this point, photography is prohibited. Oh, my, you are a risk taker. Oh, I love a man who lives on the edge. Shut up. There it is. I can read the sign. Restricted area. No entry. Use of deadly force authorized. Oh, this is so exciting. All right, let me handle this. Hello? State your business. Hi, how are you today? State your business. Is that Brad? Brad the Bad Wilson? Hey, hey! It's me, Ian McDonald, 2nd Battalion, Fort Bragg. How you doing? This is not Brad Wilson, and if you do not clearly state your business, we will enforce military law. Oh. Well, I'm here to pick up my fiancé, Audrey. Audrey McKenna. We do not have anyone by that name here, sir. That's kind of weird. I mean, she told me to meet her right here at the front gate. Just... Just tell her I'm here. Sir, you will proceed no further and you will turn that vehicle around immediately. And I, I don't think that's probably what... Ian, stop the van. A security breach at gate two. A security breach at gate two. Ian, stop the damn doing. van! You got company. All those inside the bus, exit with your hands above your heads. You are all under arrest. Okay, boys, no need to panic. Hold your friendly fire. All right, everyone, stay calm. Just do what they say. Yeah, you keep talking. Any luck, we'll shoot him. Good afternoon. My name is Constable Benton Fraser, and this is my wolf, Diefenbaker. May I? And now, uh, introducing from the left. Understood. This is a maximum security military base. What part of Don't Move didn't you understand? Brad, you've changed, man. We were Semper Fi, compadres. We swore we'd go down together. Excuse me, could you please shoot him? Back in line. If I may explain, this gentleman's fiance, Audrey McKenna. Yes, uh, she either is or once was an employee at this base, and we were wondering if perhaps you could shed some light on her rather sudden disappearance. Yes. Take us to your leader. Take these three. Leave two men with the others. Have you seen my son? He was a pilot, you know. No, ma'am. Aliens. <laughs> well, Mr. McDonald, if your fiance has indeed been captured by uh, creatures from outer space, I'm afraid I can provide you with little comfort. This space is military, pure and simple, notwithstanding your um, brochure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can laugh if you want, but that's a very high-quality program. And what about Audrey? Does she work here or not? Well, she's your fiancé. I would think you would know. Hmm? Lieutenant? There's no Audrey McKenna on the personnel roster, sir. I've checked the computer back ten years. What a shock. Sorry we can't help you, Detective. No problem, Colonel. Sorry for the intrusion. Is it... Uh possible that you might recognize this woman, perhaps by a different name. Pray, we still can't help you. She's very beautiful, though. You two make a very happy couple. I, uh, hope you find her. Oh, really? Then why don't you just tell me where she is, then, huh? Thank you, Colonel. You believe him? Come on. Now, wait a second. Don't you people see a cover-up? Oh, you're telling me aliens are just going to fall out of the sky and the U.S. Army is going to just let them Go. snatch Come people on. away Come from on. the ones they love? I don't want to get arrested. No, oh. wait a second. Continue surveillance, sir? Yes. Keep an eye on them until they leave town.
Give me the lab. They know her, or at least they know who she is. Junior officer, I noticed that. His eyes, right? Just before he talked about Audrey, he looked away. He didn't even look at her picture. Yeah, what about the colonel? The colonel never blinked. Not yeah. once. Yeah, but he's in on it, too. I think so, yes. So how do you know? Sweat. No. Shallow breathing. Yeah, no. Dilated pupils. Not that I noticed. So what, then? His tabletop. Ah, his tabletop. Yes, his tabletop. His tabletop? His tabletop, Ray. Audrey McKenna's file was on his tabletop. What? That was Audrey. In the red parka. I just saw her get into that Bronco. Oh, come on. Right, what was I thinking? The kid with the rockets on the loose again! wants to see you. I demand you take me to the colonel's office. When my grandfather, Admiral Nimitz, finds out about this, ho oh, ho, you people are in some serious trouble. You do not want to mess with a man who's named after a battleship, I'll tell you right now. Audrey. Get your hands off me. You're not a, what have you done to Audrey? Gentlemen, I thought we'd covered this ground. Do you know this man? No, sir. Have you ever seen him before today? No, sir. Your friend here seems to think that Specialist Johnson is this person, Audrey. In fact, he chased her halfway across the base, endangering himself and members of my command. Now, if you don't mind, my assistant and I have reports to get back to. And gentlemen, if I catch you or your friend here on the base, no matter how good the reason, I'll arrest you, call your superior officers, and make sure that traffic duty is all either of you ever see for a very, very long time. Do I make myself plain? Very plain, sir. Come on, Ian. I saw her. It, it's true. Gentlemen. Yes, Colonel. But you guys don't believe anything. You've put this project in jeopardy. I cannot allow that. Watch the sky, Norman. Do you think that's them? Where? That little twinkling light. Is it shaped like a flag saucer? Oh, don't be silly, Edna. Saucers were just made up. No, it'll look like, like the shuttle. You know, a plane with rocket boosters. You think so? Oh, yes. Our son flies planes. Not anymore, dear. Uh, he died. In the war. That's what they said. But I think he's up there with them. What do you think, Mr. Glassman? I think this chair is killing me. Oh, take mine. Oh, no, take mine. Take mine. Take mine. No, 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 stay where you are. It's a star. I mean, you think people get to a certain age, they stop kidding themselves. Look who's talking. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. Your story is nothing but full of malarkey. Hey, my story is not malarkey. Your story's full of malarkey. You know it, and I know it, and he Ray, knows it. Ray, Audrey McKenna's file was on the desk in that base, and yet no one seems willing to admit that she was in any way connected to it. Don't you find that even vaguely curious? That woman was not kidnapped by aliens or by anybody else. She is on that base, and she doesn't want to be found, especially by him. You're wrong about that, my friend. I am not wrong, and I am not your friend, okay? This whole thing is a figment of your imagination. No, man. No, she made a big mistake. When she realizes, she's going to come running right back to me. All right, that's it. That's it. Time for a wake-up call, pal. Well, you don't think she's crying her eyes out right now? Not unless she's cutting onions. You're harsh, man. You're really harsh. Right. Look, sooner or later, he's got to face the facts, all right? Now, look, kid, you're not the first guy to be taken to the cleaners. What Ray is trying to say What is... Ray is trying to say is, a girl sees a guy in a bar, namely you. She's got maybe a half hour to kill. Now, you're not the best looking guy in the joint, but compared to the locals, you're Brad Pitt. She bats her eyelashes, she gets you into bed, and after your 15 minutes are up, she takes your ring on the way out the door as a souvenir. It happens. We've all been there, we all know the drill. Yeah. Yeah, but I forgot about the drill.
Well, that, that, that really, really seems to have helped, Rick. Yeah, yeah great, great. Go ahead, you two go. Leave me here to look for aliens. No such thing. They're going to miss the Skywatch. Such a good eater. Do you like dogs? Fur gives me hives. Son? So that's it then. He's right. I'm an idiot. No girl for five minutes, and all of a sudden I want to marry her. And I give her my mother's ring, just like that. So you're packing it in. You're gonna leave? 35 years she wore that ring. She did not take it off her finger once until the day she died. And I gave it away for nothing. How do you know it was for nothing? Because she told me, okay? Oh, she did? When? In the bar? She told me. When? While she was being abducted by aliens? She told me when. When, Ian? When did she tell you? You see, she didn't tell you anything. Now, I would imagine that you're... that you're afraid to find out, but your alternative is that you live the rest of your life wondering. Now, we will find Audrey. And when we do, you can ask her for yourself. Okay, that's good. That's enough. I want to... I, I have something for you. Just... Uh, stay here. Don't peek. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Don't peek. All right. That's not what I meant! Oh, great. Okay, we've got something coming up here. This could be it. Running into here. Listen, I can't chat. Nice to see you.
gentlemen, in aggregate, these charges normally carry penalties of upwards of 30 years. Providing we strike intent to sedition from the list, a charge that typically involves electricity and concentrations which I assure you, you do not want to experience firsthand. Now, you have been spared the full weight of these penalties thanks to the intercession of the city of Chicago and the government of Canada, both of whom have requested leniency, claiming uh, diminished mental capacity. Now, in light of the manifest truth of these claims, we have no choice but to process and release you. Thank you, Colonel. You're welcome. And now, Mr. MacDonald, on a more private note. If I so much as catch sight of you within five miles of a United States military installation, I will personally shoot you right between the eyes with the largest caliber weapon we're currently developing in our research labs. Is that understood? Boy, oh boy. When Billy Carter appointed my uncle to the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, that is exactly the kind of threatening behavior he was trying to root out. Ian. God, that makes me mad. Ian. Audrey. Ian. It's you. Yeah. Well, why did you... I had to go to work. In the middle of a marriage proposal? Ian, something very important happened here tonight. Something I've been working on for a long time. What? It's not the kind of thing I'm allowed to talk about. You mean they... <sighs> oh, you mean they came? Yeah, they actually came. Well, it's a funny thing about the truth, isn't it? I mean, you can look at a cloud from, from one angle and see uh, a camel. But you look at that same cloud from a different angle and you see uh, a barbecue. But no matter how you look at it, it's still a cloud. Until it rains and then... It's gone. Yeah, I think I understand that. So that's the way it's going to be then, huh? Me and the kids waiting, dinner on the table cold. Family always the last priority. None of us, none of us ever knowing when you're going to tell the truth. Is that the way it's going to be? Do you want your ring back? No. I kept my promise. You keep that. You know, when we met... It was like magic, like summer lightning. You took one look at me and you knew right away that I was the man that you were going to spend the rest of your life with. No. I thought you were cute. You see, for me, it takes more than 42 minutes. Maybe if we had 43? I'm going to be at the Constellation later. If somebody, say, some guy, wanted to buy me a Cosmopolitan, I probably wouldn't say no. I'll be there. And I'll probably see you. Colonel's orders. Thanks for all your help, guys. Hey. You guys gotta lend me some money. What's in it for me? What? Well, you can have the bus. What bus? It's been confiscated. So we'll steal it back. Ian. Perhaps we could recover it, Ray. Well, I ain't driving back in that bus. Well, Fraser will drive. I'd rather hitchhike. You risk arrest? You've already been arrested. Shut up. Ray. And you, the next time you ask me a hypothetical question? Yes. The answer is no. That makes no sense, Ray. Hypothetically.
you wish that you could stay There's four directions on this map, but you're only going one way 